What we're going to be doing in this video is applying our understanding of transformations that we've been applying to other functions, and we're going to take, uh, take those transformations and apply them to trigonometric functions. So as it turns out, the transformations we're going to be applying work in a very, very, very similar way. Uh, so this may look new, but as long as you've been studying transformations of functions, you should be able to jump on board pretty quickly with this. So below the, this chart here, I've just got the general equations for a transformed trig function for both sine and cos. Uh, and you can see that there are four parameters that are, that are inside both of these expressions. Uh, I'm just going to go over what each of those parameters do, and I'm going to compare them to the, uh, the transformations that you should already know at this point. Uh, all right, so let's look at A first. So this, this A parameter, this tells you the amplitude of the function. Uh, this is going to be very similar to the stretch or compression. It behaves in the exact same way. So if A is a, a number greater than 1, you have a stretch in, in the vertical direction by a factor of that, that A value. Uh, and if A is between 0 and 1, you've got a compression by a factor of uh, the denominator of that fraction. Okay, so that's the amplitude. That's going to that's going to change how far away the max or min is from the central axis of your of your graph. Okay, the k value. We use this to get the period. Uh, we the way we calculate the period is we divide 360 degrees by k. So this tells us the number of complete cycles we're going to go through in 360 degrees. This is very similar to a horizontal stretch or compression. I'm pretty sure there's a typo there. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, they're rare. Uh, and let's look at D next. So the D here is inside the brackets after the X. This is what we call a phase shift. This is the exact same thing as a horizontal translation. So we move it to the right uh, if we're subtracting, we move it to the left if we're adding. Okay, the parameter C at the end here, exact same thing as a vertical translation, but it's usually called a vertical shift. Uh, so those are those are the four parameters we're gonna we're gonna work with as we uh, apply transformations to trig functions. All right, so just a little example. I've got a uh, an equation here of a transformed sine graph. I just want to go over uh, all the parameters and just sort of remind you of uh, you know what's going on here and and how we're transforming the sine function. So first of all, the amplitude you can see I've color coded here. The amplitude's four. Uh, that's going to tell us, remember, the distance from the max and the min to the, the central axis of, the, uh, of, the, of your sine graph or the, the equilibrium point. Uh, the period, this one, a lot of people just say, oh, the period's 3. But you have to remember that we, we use this 3 to calculate the period. So we're going to take our original period. Our sine function originally goes through one full cycle in 360 degrees. And we're going to divide by 3. So there's going to be 3 full cycles in 360 degrees, which means that we're adjusting our period to 120 degrees. Okay, so then next our phase shift, you can see that we're shifting to the right by 90. Remember, if you're subtracting after the x, you're going to the right. This is bizarro world where it's all counterintuitive. Uh, and lastly, the vertical shift you can see is two units up. Okay, so that's very useful for us uh, because what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna give you an equation like this and I'm gonna ask you to graph it. So just a couple key points here. Um, these are kind of some steps that you need to follow. The first thing you want to do, uh, I mean, you can always start with just the, the sine or cos graph. You can always start there. Uh, I like to just kind of skip ahead to this step and, and just plot five points with the correct amplitude and period. So I, I just immediately transform the original sine and cos graph by adjusting the amplitude and period. I'm comfortable enough graphing sine and cos that I can do this. Uh, in the first example or two, I'll, I'll probably show you how to just start with the original function and then apply the amplitude and period transformation. Uh, but once you're comfortable, feel free to just jump right into step one. Okay, then we're going to apply some reflections, and then we'll apply any shifts, vertical or phase. All right, so let's look at the first example here. So first thing I've, I've done is I've just filled in this chart just to, you know, just to summarize everything that's happening in this function. There's really only two transformations. I've got a reflection um, over the, the x-axis, and I've got a, a stretch by a factor of 3, or I've got an amplitude of 3. Okay, you can see that I've got a k value of 1. The k value, remember, is, is the value in front of x. That helps me calculate my period. Okay, I don't need to do any period calculations here because uh, my k value is 1. So 360 over k being 1 would be 360. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you is just how I usually start 
by, or if, if I'm not super comfortable, I usually start by just graphing cos x. So that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, so I know that cos has a starting value. If we start at zero, our cos graph always starts at one. And you can just, you can graph this by really just subbing in x values. If I sub in x equals zero, I'll get one. I know that cos goes through one complete cycle in 360 degrees. So once I've gone through a complete cycle, I've ended at 360 and I'm going to be back at one again. Okay. And that's a property of our, our cos function. I know that halfway through my period, I reach my minimum, which is negative one. So I just plot that point right there. And then you can kind of see, you can already kind of picture how this graph's going to look as a, as a cos graph. Uh, just two more key points. So I've got three already. Remember I said you want to start with five key points. I know that this cos graph has an x-intercept halfway between its max and its min, so that would be at 90, so it's halfway between 0 and 180, and likewise between 180 and 360, so that'd be at 270. Okay, those are my five key points. And then you just connect those with a nice smooth curve, and you've got yourself a nice cos graph. Okay, that's my original cos graph. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my amplitude transformation. So you can see I'm just going to take all of my y values and multiply them by 3. So this guy here would go up to 3. Uh, this one's not going anywhere because it's at 0 uh, and so on. So I've done that already for you. I've just kind of taken the uh, uh, time to do that just to make this a concise tutorial. These ones usually end up being long because I do a couple examples. Uh, but that's our, that's our stretch to make our amplitude 3. To, to, to reflect this over the x-axis, I'm just going to capitalize on my program here and just flip this uh, flip this graph like this. So you can see I've just reflected it over the x-axis. All my y values become negative if they're positive, and my negative y values become positive. Okay, perfect. So that is our transformed graph. Okay, we've got our, our reflection over the x-axis, and we've got a stretch as well. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about this this graph here. This uh, we're now dealing with sine. Okay, so my base graph is going to be sine. Again, I'll show you how to graph just sine x first. Uh, remember, sine x. If we start at zero, sub in zero, we get zero. Yeah, this thing goes through one complete cycle in 360 degrees. Uh, halfway through that, with sine, I have an x-intercept at 180, and then halfway between my x-intercepts at 90, I reach my maximum. And halfway between my second set of x-intercepts, I reach a minimum at 270. Okay, so you can always start by plotting sine that way. Uh, and I'm just going to move this green uh, dotted graph up here. Okay, so that's where I'm starting. Now, if you take a look at your equation, your k value is 2. And you'll remember that to calculate your period, you always use, uh, sorry, wrong slide there. You always use 360 divided by your k value. Right, so our k value in this case is 2. So we're going to do 360 divided by 2 to get a period of 180 degrees. What that tells me to do is make this thing go through one full cycle in 180 degrees instead of 360 degrees. So in order to go through one full cycle in 180 degrees, I'd have to start at 0. I'd have to end at 180 degrees, right, because I'm going through one full cycle. And now instead of having an x-intercept at 180 and 360, I'm now going to have an x-intercept between these two x-intercepts. So I should have one at 90. Okay, and then now, again, I can use the same concept I used when I graphed my original sine graph, and I can say, I know I'm going to reach a maximum in between 0 and 90 degrees. So that's approximately here at 45 degrees, and likewise between, I'm sorry, or this was 90, uh, likewise between 90 and 180, so approximately here. Okay, so you can see I've condensed all my points by a factor of two, uh, and your graph should look like this. Okay, so we're going to have two of these cycles in 360 degrees, so I might as well duplicate this. Uh, and just to show you that this thing does continue and end at 360 if we were to keep our original period. Okay, so I've got two full cycles in 360 degrees. All right, that's our, tra our transformed sine graph. All right, so another one here, cos, uh, this is a cos graph that I'm transforming. I've got an amplitude of four. My k value is one over two. So if I take 360 and divide by that k value, you're gonna get 720. In this case, I'm just gonna start with the transformed cos graph because I'm thinking maybe you're comfortable graphing sine and cos at this point. Um, so I'm gonna start by just 
taking my, uh, my amplitude of four and stretching my original coast graph. So the original coast graph would start at, at one. I'm gonna stretch it out so that it starts at four. And you can see that I rotate through one complete cycle in 360 degrees to stretch this thing in the horizontal direction to give it a period of 720 degrees. I know that I'm going to go through one complete cycle in 720 degrees. So I'm gonna start at four, I'm gonna end at 720. Halfway through that, that period, I'm gonna reach my minimum because I'm dealing with cos. And then halfway in between uh, this first point and the second point, I reach my x-intercept. And likewise, in between 360 and 720. And that's where we get this nice stretched cos graph from. Okay, so you can see that I've done that for you there. So this guy is stretched horizontally compared to our original graph. And that should be it for our transformations of that function. All right, I'll do, I think we've got two more here. I know this is kind of turning into a long tutorial, uh, but I just want to make sure you've got enough exposure to all of these sorts of transformations. So you can see this one, this, this is the first time we're working with a phase shift. Again, you're going to start with just plotting your original sine graph. I've already accounted for this amplitude of three, so I've kind of stretched it, you can see here. Uh, and what I'm going to do, because I've got the same period, all I really have to do is just pick this function up my original transformed function of, of three sine x and just move each point to the right by 90 degrees. Okay, so you can see if I look at, at zero, zero here and I move to the right by 90 degrees, everything comes with it. Every, every point moves and you've got yourself a nice little transformed function to the right by 90. Okay, so just two transformations there. Uh, you can see I started with a base graph, I stretched it and then I applied my, my translation to the right. Okay, so one more, uh, just last graphing example here. A couple transformations involved. If you think back to the video lesson that I did on transformations, I mentioned that it's important that you always factor out the coefficient in front of x in order to avoid skewing your translation. That applies here as well. We got a common factor out that three out of both of these terms. You can see I've done that. Uh, if I distribute that three back in, I would get this original expression. Once, once we do that, you can see that I've adjusted the, the translation to the left by uh, it started with 360 degrees, now you can see that it's 120 degrees. Uh, so I've just summarized the transformations in this table. Again, I'm going to start with a uh, with the coast graph uh, that just has an amplitude of 1. That's my original coast graph starting at 0, 1, ending at 360, 1, with a minimum at 180 degrees. Uh, but what I'm going to do is account for the fact that I've got three full cycles in 360 degrees. So I'm going to compress this full cycle into 120 degrees, which would look something like this. All of the point, the y values are going to stay the same, but I'm condensing my graph so that it goes through one full cycle in 120 degrees. Okay, so that's what this red graph here would represent. Okay, starting at 0, 1, ending at 120, comma 1, hitting a minimum at 60, and the x-intercepts would be halfway in between. Okay, so that's, that takes care of my amplitude and my period. The phase shift of 120 degrees to the left, I can literally just pick up this graph and just imagine taking 0, 1 and moving it to the left by 120 degrees. It would now be at a negative 120, 1. All of the other points are going to come with it. And I might as well just move down 1 from here as well. You can see I can just shift down a unit by 1. This would be my, where my final graph would, would end up. Uh, I've just made sort of like a another graph here. I'm just going to place this over top of the red graph just to show you that this graph does in fact continue in both directions. Um, it's important just to remember that you know our graphs don't just stop. Uh, they do continue forever in both directions because our domain really is uh, infinite here. All right, so one last important example I want to go over here. Uh, in this video tutorial, we pretty much just looked at equations and graphed using transformations. What I'm going to show you how to do here is go backwards. Given a graph, we're going to write the equation for this trigonometric function. So the first thing I want to do is just pick out the fact that you can see the amplitude for this thing is 4. right? You can see that the distance from this equilibrium point to the max and the min happens to be 4. So that's going to be useful for us. We know our amplitude. Uh, the next thing we might as well look at is, is the period. Um, you, why not just pick this point right here, for instance? You can see I'm starting at my maximum, uh, and you, you can see that it goes through one full cycle in 180 degrees. So that's going to help us come up with our k value for our equation. 
Uh, so let's start with the fact that we know a, a periodic function has a period of 360 over k. We can, we can solve for k by substituting in our new period of 180 degrees. And let's just solve for k. And you'll see that you end up with a, a, a value of 2 for your k value. So we've got our amplitude, our a value, we've got our k value. Uh, the next thing we have to do is really we have to decide if this is a cos or a sine graph. Uh, by assuming that we're starting at this point here, we're kind of, you know, it's, it, it works in our favor to, to consider this as a cosine graph. Um, but what I'll do is I'll show you how to write both uh, sine and cos for this graph, because remember that there is a relationship between sine and cos in that one is just a phase shift of the other. Uh, but let's, let's focus on cos for a moment. Uh, we're just going to say the, the equation for this is definitely going to be y equals 4. That's going to be a, our amplitude. We're going to be working with cos. We've determined that the k value is 2. Now if we, if we picture what a cosine graph looks like, we know it starts at its max, goes through one full cycle, and ends at its max. You can see this graph has not been transformed left or right, and, and it has not been shifted up or down vertically. So we could really, we could just conclude that our equation is 4 cos 2x. Okay, and that counts for the period and the, the or sorry, the, the period and the amplitude. Okay, alternatively, if we looked at this as a sine graph, we could say, why don't we start right here? Sorry, I'm just gonna condense this a little bit, just run out of space. If we start right here, Okay, this would be our this could be our sine graph, right? Sine starts at at zero one, uh, but this graph does not start at at zero one. It's it starts it looks like it's starting in between ninety and one hundred and eighty degrees. So we need some sort of phase shift here. Uh, so you can picture if I just sort of moved this y-axis here, you would see that that would be a, a nice little sine graph with an amplitude of four. The same period, right? Our period would be would be a uh, 180 degrees, our k value would also be two. Uh, but in order to make this a sine graph, you can see that we'd have to shift over to the right by 135 degrees. That would be this point right here in between 90 and 180 degrees. Okay, so it's really your choice. There are really an infinite number of equations that you could write. Uh, I could also choose to start here if I chose sine, and I could call this a reflected sine graph. Instead of going upwards, it, it, this, this graph would be going downwards. Uh, my phase shift would only be 45 degrees if I chose uh, to start at that point. Uh, but you can really see that there's an infinite number of possibilities here.